In this video, we're going to take a look at a specific gene that's associated with cancer growth. In particular, we're focusing on breast cancer. For many people, anytime breast cancer and genetics are mentioned, four letters pop to mind. B R C A, also known as BRCA. The abbreviation BRCA comes from the BR of breast and the CA of cancer. Mutations in a BRCA gene can increase the lifetime risk of somebody developing breast cancer. But it might not be quite as straightforward as you think. So for starters, there are actually two BRCA genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2. These genes are both tumor suppressor genes. They code for proteins that play a role in repairing damaged DNA. So you can imagine that if there's a mutation in a BRCA gene that ultimately changes the shape of the resulting protein, then it could be a lot less effective in repairing DNA. So let's take a look at BRCA2. The BRCA2 gene has 27 exons and more than 10,000 base pairs that ultimately contribute to the mRNA. According to the University of Utah BRCA2 database, there are more than 2,500 variants of this gene that have been identified so far. Nearly 85% of those are pathogenic or potentially contributing to cancer occurrence. Let's take a look at just one of those. This particular mutation is called 999-DEL5. Why? Well, because this mutation consists of a deletion of five nucleotides at position 999 of the gene. When five nucleotides are deleted, it leads to a missense frameshift mutation. And this would have a huge impact on whatever amino acids are ultimately coded for, for all of the codons that occur after the mutation on that stretch of DNA. Now, why would someone experience such a specific mutation? I mean, aren't mutations random? Well, yes, mutations are random. And no, somebody wouldn't just sort of have this mutation occur in one of their cells. There's no inherent reason why position 999 on that gene is susceptible to a five nucleotide deletion. Instead, this mutation was paired with a founder effect. At some point in the distant past, somebody with the 999-DEL5 mutation settled in the Scandinavian region of Northwestern Europe. That person had relatively good reproductive success for whatever reason and passed on that mutation to their offspring. As their offspring reproduced and as human settlements grew in that area of the world, that mutation became a permanent mainstay in those people groups. Now, not everyone from that part of the world would have this 999-DEL5 genotype, but you would have to have some Scandinavian ancestry in order to have a chance of carrying this particular mutation. We know that cisgender women who carry this mutation have about a 40% increased chance of developing breast cancer. We know that cisgender men who carry the mutation also have an elevated risk when it comes to developing breast cancer. And while cancer research, at least historically, has pretty much only focused on cisgender men and cisgender women, it's quite likely that anyone carrying this mutation, including transgender women, transgender men, and non-binary folks, would have an increased chance of developing breast cancer. All that said, only about 5 or maybe 10% of breast cancers are associated with a mutation on a BRCA gene. I'm sure some of you may remember the well-publicized decision that actress, filmmaker, and humanitarian Angelina Jolie made in 2013 when she got a preventative bilateral mastectomy. She did this because she discovered that she had a mutation in one of her BRCA genes, and it would have made her more susceptible to getting breast cancer. In her case, 
she also had a family history of cancer. She had lost her mother, her grandmother, and her aunt to the disease. Now, these kinds of decisions should never be made lightly. And a mutation to either BRCA gene doesn't necessarily mean that you're destined to get breast cancer, but it does mean that you'd have an elevated risk. A mastectomy is one surefire way to pretty much ensure that you wouldn't get breast cancer. Of course, preventative measures like regular breast exams and mammograms can also be invaluable for early detection should a cancer start to form. For other examples of specific genes that are associated with breast cancer, be sure to check out the other videos in our breast cancer series or navigate over to www.evo-ed.org for teaching and learning materials, as well as other helpful resources. That's all for now. I'll see you next time.